Gabby Petito. Crazed. You are aware from my other videos that the recently deceased Gabby Petito found herself ensnared by a narcissist, Brian Laundry. It can also be seen from the footage, the body cam footage of the 12th of August 2021, the emotional state that Gabby Petito presented, exhausted, ground down, bewildered, visibly upset, making excuses for her abuser, being apologetic, accepting the blame. This was very much the presentation of a victim of an abuser, and that abuser being a narcissist. I've seen this many times myself, and one of the ways by which she would have been abused would have been repeatedly made to feel that she was crazy. It is a particularly potent form of manipulation whereby we blame shift, and when our victims respond and react, possibly with anger, often with sadness, frustration, upset, the desire to make everything all right, can't we just sit down and work things through? Why does it have to be this way? Honestly, I didn't mean it that way. I didn't intend to upset you. No, no, you've got it the wrong. You've got it wrong. I didn't say that. I didn't mean that. You're reading something into it that wasn't there. All of those things which are said by victims as a consequence of our responses. The narcissist will, through the assertion of control directly, accuse you of things that you have not done. Where this is done by an unaware narcissist, that unaware narcissist truly believes that you have done it because the narcissist has revised history to cause that narcissist to believe it. It has to be that way to ensure that the narcissist acts upon it. The narcissist has to have total conviction. If they did not, they lack the appropriate skill set to implement it effectively, swiftly and promptly. An aware narcissist knows that we're telling lies, but we simply don't care. We find it entertaining to play with people. It amuses us. We have the ability, the intelligence and the speed by which we can tell lie after lie after lie and revel in so doing for the purpose of the assertion of control and drawing fuel. Whether it's an unaware narcissist or whether it's an aware narcissist, the outcome is the same. You, the victim, is made to feel like you're losing your mind. You doubt your reality. You start to think, did I do it? Or, I'm sure I did that thing, but he's saying I didn't. Perhaps I didn't after all. You start mentally checking yourself, treading on those proverbial eggshells, concerned that you're going to cause offence to us in some way. We repeatedly point out that your behaviour is inappropriate. With the unaware narcissist, this is because the narcissism causes the narcissist to believe that they are the victim and that you, the true victim, is the protagonist. The aware narcissist knows that you are the victim, but we simply don't care, and we see that it is a means to an end to ensure that we get those prime aims, and we simply don't care that we are messing with your mind. Indeed, it entertains us to do so, because that exhibits the power that we wield over you. The fact remains, whether you're dealing with an aware or, more often, unaware narcissist, you will be made to feel repeatedly that you are at fault. We blame shift onto you. We make you believe that there is something wrong with you. We may well accuse you of being a narcissist. We suggest that you need to go and see help, see a therapist, that you're highly strung, high maintenance, you're mental, nuts, that you've got a screw loose, that your emotional outbursts, outbursts demonstrate there is something wrong with you, that you can't regulate yourself that you really ought to go and seek some kind of help. This is all done to undermine you, to diminish your sense of self-worth, to reduce your self-esteem, to press down on your confidence. It's to make you easier and easier to control as your resilience becomes depleted. It is done to ensure that we can control you and draw fuel from you. By questioning your mental state and in turn doing so repeatedly and so often that you come to believe it enables us to wield more and more power over you. You end up believing that we must be right 
And often this is done in a manner of saying, we are concerned about you. We're troubled by the way that you're behaving. And we really want you to seek some help because we want you to get better. Indeed, we may go around telling other people about how we want to help you that we are concerned, perhaps telling your friends and your family members, that we're alarmed at some of the behaviours that you've engaged in. In some instances, this is a complete fabrication, nowhere near the truth. In other instances, it's a half-truth. You have been reacting, perhaps, in a violent manner, both physical and verbal. You have been crying a lot. You have been shouting and screaming. You have perhaps smashed a few pots at the house. Why? Well, of course, we leave this part out. We have been abusing you beforehand, reducing your emotional empathy towards us, so your narcissistic traits of anger and argumentativeness come to the fore by way of a reactive abuse, and therefore you lash out at us. Of course, the moment that you do, this will be used against you, as you have seen in the video of the body cam footage involving Brian Laundrie. We want you in a crazed position, because then you can't think straight, you're easier to control, and we can use that crazed state against you, either directly or by triangulating you with other people as we talk about that crazed state. In order to help you understand more about the mentality of this and the way that it may well have been used against, against Gabby Petito, I'm going to provide you with one of my established videos after this narrative, which talks about and shows the way in which a narcissist uses the mental state of a victim against them. The video is called Crazed. Listen well to it and understand that sections of this may well have been used against Gabby Petito by Brian Laundrie to gaslight her, to make her believe that she was the one that was the problem. It's undoubtedly, as we saw in the way that she presented, that she ended up believing that she was the source of the problems between them. She recognised still that there were some issues caused by him, but a lot of the time she was the one that was accepting that she was difficult, that she was fighting, that she brought it on herself, and she would have repeatedly sought to be the peacemaker. Listen to the corresponding video. It will give you further insight, and it may just enable you to recognise things that you've experienced or that you've noticed with somebody that you care about so that you can perhaps direct them to this material. This is manipulation and crazed. Crazed, how the mid-range narcissist manipulates. In this video, I'm going to provide you with a monologue, which is being said from narcissist to victim. The victim could be intimate partner secondary source, could be a family member or a friend, non-intimate secondary source, but is most likely the intimate partner primary source. The narcissist that is engaging in this monologue could possibly be middle middle range type A, most likely, and more definitely, upper mid-range. I'm going to read the monologue to you, and then I'll go back through it, identifying the various points of interest and observation with regard to the dynamic, the manipulations, etc., to further your understanding. Crazed. How a middle-range narcissist manipulates. We need to talk. Well, actually, I need to talk and you need to listen. Here, sit down there. Okay, this isn't easy, and I know you're not going to accept what I'm going to say. But you must understand that I'm doing this for you, for us. I'm concerned about, well, come to think of it, it's not just me, but I'm the one who's noticed more than anybody else. I guess that's because I'm the one who cares the most, and since I'm with you more than anybody else. I'm not the only one. Indeed, it's because more people have expressed their concerns to me that I have felt moved to do something. It's a difficult subject to broach with you because I know you won't accept what I have to tell you. I've been doing some reading, actually, in order to help me to help you, because after all, it is your best interests which I have at heart. This really troubles me to have to raise this with you, and I have nearly done it a few times, but I've told myself that I had to give you time and that you might work things out for yourself. You've no idea how hard it is to stand to one side and watch the person that you love behaving in this way. I can see you are confused, and I should come to the point. It's just difficult to have to do this. Okay. 
I have become increasingly concerned at your behaviours. As I say, chiefly, it's me, but so have your family and friends, and even a few people at work. It's okay, don't worry, no, please, don't interrupt me. You need to hear me out. Nobody is judging you. We all want to help you. We want to give you all the support you need. Sorry, I'm rambling a bit, aren't I? I suppose even now, I'm hoping that the light will shine and you will tell me that you understand and you know that you need help. There, I've said it. I think you need some help. I can see you don't understand what I mean and your silence then when I said that speaks volumes. Okay, I'm going to have to spell it out. It's your behaviour towards me and other people. It's not acceptable. You know me. I said I would always stand by you, and I will, but I cannot stand by and do nothing when I see you destroying yourself and your relationship with me, your friends, and your family. I can tell you are struggling. We all can. I'm not sure what's behind it. I'm not a doctor, but I have been doing some reading and spoken to other people, and I guess you must be losing your mind or having some kind of breakdown. I know by this shake of the head this isn't sinking in, so I'm sorry, but I'm just going to have to give you the brutal truth. I had hoped this would not be necessary, and that you would work with me on this, you know, a partnership to save what we have, but the books did say that you would probably not be able to recognise what is happening to you. That apparently is one of the first things that goes when your mental health is affected. You can't see the problem yourself, and that is why you keep doing as you do. It's not your fault. Well, it is because you're the one who's doing it, but it isn't because I'm sure you don't mean for these things to happen. I know you're a good person. I've seen that, and what has been happening recently must be the consequence of some kind of stress or something. I do know, though, the drinking doesn't help. Look, it's no good narrowing your eyes and shaking your head when I mention that. I checked the recycling bin, and I counted at least 20 bottles of wine for this fortnight. And there were three bo vodka bottles in there as well. No, don't point at me. I barely drink. Maybe the odd glass of wine with dinner, but you've been absolutely caning it. What's that? I put the bottles in there. Don't be silly. Why would I do that? Why would I waste good wine by emptying bottles and putting them in the recycling? That doesn't make any sense, does it? No. You've been drinking them. I can see you're struggling to remember, and that's part of the problem. Whatever it is that's wrong with you, it affects your memory. I've seen it. How many times have you asked me where your car keys are, or where the remote control for the television is? Hmm? Numerous times. And they're always in the same place. Always. We keep this house tidy, don't we? And yet you're asking me where something is when it's always in the same place. I can imagine that must be a bit frightening, but don't worry. I'm going to look after you. We all will. You see, I've already met with your two best friends and our family, and we agreed that you should spend some time in hospital. Money isn't an issue, as we want the best possible care for you, and I suspect that the good doctors will know what to do with you, and if you have to stay there for a while, well, don't worry, I will keep this ship sailing. I've plenty of people who rally around and give me a hand, so I don't want you to worry. It's for the best. You see, you've been losing your temper so readily and turning into someone I don't know. This rage... I don't know where it comes from. But all of a sudden, you just explode and then you start trying to blame me for things that you've done. It's not very nice and I try to brush it off, but after a while, there's only so much a person can deal with. Do you remember last week when you accused me of switching off the oven when you were making some food, but then you realised that you had never switched it on? Yes, I can see in your eyes that you remember now. You accused me repeatedly of doing it, and even though I explained how it could not have been me, because I was busy on a call in the study, you insisted that I had done it. On and on you went, jabbing your finger at me, and all because you are losing your mind. I try not to blame you for the horrible things that you say. I do think you become someone else and you don't realise what you're doing because you never say sorry afterwards, and that hurts. Your friends say you're distant with them, they feel like they don't know you anymore, and they're more worried about you. Well, and hurt as well. But once I began explaining to them your catalogue of domestic misdemeanours, well, they were very understanding and sympathetic. They agreed something needed to be done, and they have supported me making inquiries about where we can get you treated. It's fine, honestly. Don't worry about so many people knowing about what has happened. 
There isn't the same stigma these days with such problems. Everybody has been most supportive of me. They understand how difficult it has been for me in dealing with you these past few months. And they have said that if I need anything, I'm only to ask. It's so good to know that you have that support network in place. Your family are worried. About both of us, actually. But they know that I am only doing the best that I can for you. And that someone has to show some tough love here. I don't know how long it will be for, but they'll assess you, first of all. Which will probably take a couple of weeks, I suppose. And we'll see where we go from there. No, no, I don't think you're crazy. Goodness me, not at all. It's just something temporary, I'm sure. But it has gone too far. After, well, I suppose the less said about that incident last Friday, the better. What incident? Really? You know, when you broke all the window panes in the greenhouse? No, that wasn't me, it was you. Hey, look, I'm trying to help. There's no need to become aggressive. Do you see? That's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm trying to help you, and you start reacting. Look, I will ring Lee up, shall I? He saw you and helped me sort you out. Do I have to ring him? You know who are back at what I'm saying, don't you? After all, it's the truth. Just calm down, Jesus! This is why I haven't raised this with you sooner, because of how you would react. But, to be frank, I've had enough, and it's precisely this aggression and nastiness and your complete failure to ever admit that you're wrong, which has been driving me to despair. Just calm down, will you? It wasn't me, it was you. Stop shifting the blame onto me, that's not fair. If you keep going on, I'm going to call people. Do you really want to put on another performance for them? What do I mean, another one? You just don't get it, do you? Maybe you're worse than even I realised. Good God, do you really not remember what you did at the party? It was so embarrassing, I'd rather not think about it. I didn't know where to put myself, and neither did the person you were all over. I tried to smooth over it and blame it on medication and such like, but the looks I got told me all I needed to know. What do you mean it was the other way around? Please, will you stop doing this? You have to accept responsibility for your actions. This has gone on for too long, far too long. Ah, there's the doorbell. That'll be the people from the hospital. I've packed a bag for you. Don't look so alarmed. They're here to help you and to give me a break from all this crazy. It's going to be all right, I promise. Just promise me one thing, that you will try to get better for both our sakes, yes? I don't want to be driven crazy, too. So there we have a monologue from a mid-range narcissist and, as mentioned, either middle-middle-range Taipei or, more likely, upper mid-range. Sound familiar to you at all? Recognise some of the things that are being said? Here's the analysis. We need to talk. Sense of entitlement. Well, actually, I need to talk and you need to listen. Control, sense of entitlement. Here, sit down there. OK, this isn't easy martyrdom and i know you're not going to accept what i'm going to say prejudging but you must understand that i'm doing this for you false compassion for us i'm concerned lie about well actually it's not just me but i'm the one who's noticed it more than anybody else but i guess that's because i'm the one who cares the most lie false compassion and also since i am with you more than anybody else i'm not the only one this might be a lie or other people have noticed certain aberrant behaviour. Indeed, it's because more people have expressed their concerns to me. Again, the narcissist might be lying about that revision of history. That I felt moved to do something. It's a difficult subject to broach with you, because I know you won't accept what I have to tell you. Prejudgment. I've been doing some reading, actually, in order to help me to help you. Grandiosity. Because after all, it is in your best interest which I have at heart. False compassion veneer of respectability and caring. Remember that the mid-ranger honestly believes that he or she cares for this person and they believe that the reading up is appropriate to try and help them. This really troubles me to have to raise this with you, martyrdom, and I've nearly done it a few times but I've told myself that I had to give you time and that you might work things out yourself. False compassion, blame shifting. You have no idea how hard it is to stand to one side 
and watch the person that you love behaving in this way. Pity play. I can see you are confused, and I should come to the point. It's just difficult to have to do this. Pity play. Okay, I have become increasingly concerned at your behaviours. Blame shifting. As I say, chiefly I have, but so have your family and friends, and even a few people at work. Again, this, this is triangulation, possibly a lie through the revision of history. It's okay, don't worry, and no, please, don't interrupt me. You need to hear me out. Sense of entitlement. Nobody is judging you. Hypocrisy. We all want to help you. False compassion. We want to give you all the support you need. False compassion. Sorry, I'm rambling, aren't I? I suppose even now I am hoping that the light will shine and you will tell me that you understand and you know that you need help. Blame shifting. There, I have said it. I think you need some help. I can see you don't understand what I mean and your silence then when I said that speaks volumes. Blame shifting. Okay, I'm going to have to spell it out. It is your behaviour towards me and other people. Blame shifting. It is not acceptable. Judgment. You know me. I said I'd always stand by you. Veneer of respectability. And I will. But I cannot stand by and do nothing when I see you destroying yourself and your relationship with me, your friends and your family. Blame shifting. I can tell you are struggling. We all can. Possibly a lie for triangulation. I am not sure what's behind it. I am, after all, not a doctor, but I've been doing some reading and spoken to other people, and I guess you must be losing your mind or having some kind of breakdown. Hypocrisy. The narcissist says I'm not a doctor, but then goes on to behave as if he is. I know by the shake of that head, this isn't sinking in. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to just give you the brutal truth. False contrition. I had hoped this would not be necessary and you'd work with me on this. Blame shifting. You know, a partnership to save what we have, blame shifting, but the books did say that you would probably not be able to recognise what is happening to you. That apparently is one of the first things that happens when your mental health is affected. Provocation. You cannot see the problem yourself, and that is why you keep doing it as you do. Provocation. It's not your fault, false contrition, sorry, false compassion. Well, it is because you are the one who is doing it. But it isn't because I am sure you don't mean for these things to happen. I know you are a good person. I've seen that, and what has been happening recently must be a consequence of some kind of stress or something. I do know the drinking doesn't help. Blame shifting, projection. Look, it's no good narrowing your eyes and shaking your head when I mention that. I checked the recycling bin, and I counted at least 20 bottles of wine for this fortnight, and there were three vodka bottles in there. No, don't point at me. I barely drink. Lie. Denial. Maybe the old glass of wine with dinner, but you have been caning it. Provocation. What's that? I put the bottles there. Don't be silly. Why would I do that? Denial. Rejection of a threat to the assertion of control by, assisting, by in asserting that the narcissist is the one who has actually put the bottles in there. Why would I waste good wine by emptying bottles and putting them in the recycling? Lie. The narcissist has actually been caught in the lie here with this comment straight after the other one because nobody suggested that he had been emptying the bottles. He might have found empty bottles somewhere else and put them in or that he had drunk the wine himself and put the bottles in. And therefore, by offering the suggestion of why would I waste good wine by emptying bottles and put them in the recycling, he's actually given away what he's been doing. But because he's an unaware narcissist, he doesn't realise that that is what he has done. That doesn't make any sense, does it? So the narcissist, in his haste to reject the threat to the assertion of his control, has actually made a, uh, an admission, not that he will see that. No, you have been drinking them. Provocation, projection. I can see you are struggling to remember, and that is part of the problem. Whatever it is that's wrong with you, it affects your memory. I have seen it. Provocation. A sense of entitlement to make that judgment. How many times have you asked me where your car keys are or where the remote control for the television is? Potentially revision of history or gaslighting. Mm -hmm. Numerous times, and they're always in the same place. Always. We keep this house tidy, don't we? And yet you are asking me where something is, when it is always in the same place. I can imagine that must be a bit frightening, false compassion. But don't worry, I'm going to look after you. We all will veneer of respectability and care. You see, I've already met with your two best friends. 
smearing, and our family, smearing, and we agreed that you should spend some time in hospital, smearing. Money isn't an issue, grandiosity, as we want the best possible care for you, false compassion, and I suspect the good doctors will know what to do with you, and if you had to stay there for a while, well, don't worry, I will keep this ship sailing, grandiosity, martyrdom. I have plenty of people, grandiosity, about fuel matrix, who will rally around and give me a hand, so I don't want you to worry. False compassion, it is for the best. You see, you have been losing your temper so readily. This is either the revision of history, or it's possible the victim has been losing their temper as a consequence of the reduction of their emotional empathy caused by the external stress of which is the abuse, resulting in the narcissistic trait of anger coming to the fore. However, through the lack of accountability of the narcissist, the narcissist will not accept because he will not be able to see that it's him that's caused the victim to lose her temper. You see, you have been losing your temper so readily and turning into someone I do not know. This rage. I do not know where it comes from, but all of a sudden you just explode, provocation, and then you start trying to blame me for things that you have done, blame shifting, projection. It isn't very nice, and I try to brush it off, pity play, but after a while there is only so much a person can deal with, pity play. Do you remember last week when you accused me of switching off the oven when you were making some food, but then you realised that you had never switched it on? Revision of history. Yes, I can see in your eyes that you remember now. You accused me repeatedly of doing it, and even though I explained how it could not have been me because I was busy on a call in the study, you insisted that I had done it. Revision of history. On and on you went, blame shifting, jabbing your finger at me, and all because you are losing your mind. Provocation. I try not to blame you for the horrible things you say. Provocation. Martyrdom. I do think you become someone else, and you do not realise what you are doing because you never say sorry afterwards. Provocation. And that hurts. Pity play. Your friends say you are distant with them. They feel like they do not know you anymore and they are more worried about you. Well, and hurt as well. Possibly a lie or possibly as a consequence of smearing that has provoked those actual responses in the friends. Once I began explaining to them your catalogue of domestic misdemeanours, smearing, well, they were very understanding and sympathetic. They agreed something needed to be done and they've supported me, grandiosity, making inquiries about where we can get you treated. It's fine, honestly. Don't worry about so many people knowing what has happened. There isn't the same stigma these days with such problems. Everybody has been most supportive of me. Grandiosity. Self-centeredness. They understand how difficult it has been for me in dealing with you these past few months, and they have said that if I need anything, I'm only to ask facade management. It is so good to know that you have that support network in place. Facade management. Your family are worried about us both, actually. Self-centeredness, but they know that I am only doing the best that I can for you. Grandiosity, and that sometimes one has to show some tough love. I don't know how long it will be for, but they will assess you, first of all, which will probably take a couple of weeks, and then we shall see where you go from there. No, no, I don't think that you're crazy. Lie. Goodness me, not at all. It is just something temporary, I'm sure, but it's gone too far after, well, I suppose the less said about that incident last Friday, the better. Gaslighting, revision of history. What incident? Really? You know, when you broke all the window panes in the greenhouse? Gaslighting, provocation. No, that wasn't me. It was you. Lie, however, the narcissism causes the narcissist to truly believe that he didn't do it when he did. Hey, look, I am trying to help false compassion. There is no need to become aggressive. Projection. Do you see? This is exactly what I am talking about. I am trying to help you, and you start reacting. Look, I will ring up Lee, shall I? Lieutenant or member of Coterie. He saw you, lie, and help me sort you out. Do I have to ring him? Threat. You know he will back up what I am saying, don't you? Threat. After all, it is the truth. Just calm down. Jesus, this is why I haven't raised this with you sooner, because of how you would react blame shifting but to be frank i have had enough and it is precisely this aggression and nastiness and your complete failure provocation to ever admit that you are wrong projection that has been driving me to despair just count on down will you it wasn't me it was you stop shifting the blame onto me that isn't fair pity play if you keep going on i'm going to call people threat and do you really want me to put on another performance for them threat what do i mean another one you just don't get it, do you? Maybe you are worse than I even I realised. Provocation. Good God. Do you really not remember what you did at the party? It was so embarrassing I'd rather not think about it. 
didn't know where to put myself, and neither did the person you were all over. Projection, blame shifting, provocation. I tried to smooth over it. Facade management. Blame it on medication, false compassion and such like. But the looks I told me gave me all I needed to know. What do you mean it was the other way around? Denial. Please will you stop doing this? You have to accept responsibility for your actions. This has gone on far too long. Far too long. Projection, blame shifting. Ah, there is the doorbell. That will be the people from the hospital. I have packed a bag from you. False compassion. Don't look so alarmed. They're here to help you and to give me a break from all this crazy. Projection, provocation, self-centeredness. It's going to be all right. I promise. Just promise me one thing, that you will try to get better for both of our sakes, yes. Veneer of respectability, patronizing. I don't want to be driven crazy. Two, self-centeredness, pity play. And there you have it. A remarkable example of how a mid-range narcissist, unable because of the blinding effect of the narcissism to see that they are the one that is the problem and not the victim, and that their behavior has pushed this individual to the, break of brink, to the brink of breakdown with the consequential behaviors which are now being used against them. Recognize the various constituent parts of this analysis and utilize them to further defend yourself. I'm H.G. Tudor. This was crazed. How a mid-range narcissist manipulates. Thank you for listening.